Asked is recognized. Thank you, Chairman. The purpose of this bill is simple. The Palestinians that conducted this attack on Israel, they didn't do it by themselves. They didn't do it without support from the outside. They didn't do it without support from other countries, from perhaps nonprofit organizations, as we might call them here in the U.S., or non-government entities or charity groups. The support was far-reaching, and it has been for many years, whether it's the financial support, the support of intelligence, the support of propaganda, the support of ordnance, rockets, artillery, grenades, the support of small arms. It's been extensive, and it extends well beyond the borders of the Gaza Strip and the borders of the West Bank. The purpose of this legislation, very specifically, is to oppose Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade and Lion's Den and any other affiliate or successor group that's using goods to include medicines or dual-use items or other things to smuggle weapons and materials and other items that are, that are used for war against Israelis, used for terrorism against Israel. To be very specific about this, it's to name, identify, sanction all of those entities that assist in sponsoring or providing financial services or financial goods, material services or goods, technological services or goods, any of those, those aforementioned entities that might provide any of that, that, that have absolutely enabled the attack that we just witnessed to take place, that they be sanctioned in terms of asset freezes, arms embargoes, travel bans, import-export controls, you name it. If they're finding a way to get it into the hands of the Palestinians, and those in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank that conducted these attacks by any name, we should be doing everything that we can to stop that from occurring. We have the capabilities to prevent that from occurring. We have to exercise those capabilities to make sure that it does not happen and that we can stand by and say that we did everything possible to, to make sure that never again was exactly what we fought for. And in that, Mr. Chairman, I yield you the remainder of my time. Uh, gentleman yields uh, the remainder of his time. Any further discussion on the bill? Ms. Manning is recognized. Sorry. Mr. Meeks. Hamas has been, since its inception, a military and political entity dedicated for one thing, the destruction of Israel. And rather than addressing the needs and concerns of the Palestinian people, Hamas has furthered their suffering. This group has used Palestinians as human shields, has terrorized its own population. And of course, this October the 7th raid and destruction, kidnapping, rape of Israeli people. And it has destabilized the Gaza Strip. Since 2001, Hamas has launched tens of thousands of rockets at Israeli and Palestinian civilians, conducted countless terror attacks, engaged in hostage taking, and tortured the Palestinian people. The State Department first designated Hamas as a foreign terrorist organization in 1997. And the EU and other Western countries have done the same. But today, passage of this legislation will provide more tools for this and future administrations to hold Hamas accountable for its terrorism and brutality. And while Hamas leaders don't have assets in the United States, New sanctions have been unveiled by the Biden administration this week that will increase pressure on some of the countries that host them. With this legislation, the United States will now be able to penalize third parties <coughs> who provide assistance to Hamas. 
While we desire to put more pressure on Hamas, we also want to make certain that American and partner NGOs and governments are still able to assist the people of Gaza with their humanitarian needs. The waiver present in this legislation, while strict, will allow that assistance to continue. We have verified this with the state and treasury departments. So therefore, I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting Mr. Mass's bill. And I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion on the bill? Ms. Manning's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am proud to, support, to speak in support of H.R. 340, the Hamas International Financing Prevention Act, a bipartisan bill introduced by our colleagues Brian Mast and Josh Gottheimer to impose sanctions on the terrorist group Hamas. On October 7th, we woke in horror to find Hamas's brutal and despicable terrorist attacks, firing rockets at innocent civilians, storming the Israeli border and invading Israel, going house to house, murdering babies, executing parents in front of their children, massacring 260 young people at a music festival. Hamas has killed 31 U.S. citizens and more than 1,400 Israelis in its attacks while taking 200 people hostage in Gaza, including babies and toddlers. And just today, we learned that an 80-year-old American citizen and her 13-year-old granddaughter who were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists from their kibbutz on October 7th have now been found dead. So let us remember, Hamas terrorists are not militants, they are not freedom fighters, they are not a civil resistance movement. They are a brutal foreign terrorist organization which is dedicated to the destruction of the state of Israel and the murder of Jews. It is no secret that this is their goal. It's plainly stated in their charter. It's important also to recognize that Hamas has no regard for the lives of innocent Palestinian civilians in Gaza, the very people they were elected to govern, who suffer under Hamas. Let there be no mistake, Hamas bears responsibility for their pain as well. All countries around the world should join the U.S. in demanding Hamas immediately release all of the hostages currently held in Gaza. I am pleased that yesterday, the Treasury Department imposed a round of additional sanctions on senior Hamas officials and their financial backers. We need to continue to bring pressure to bear on Hamas and cut off their flow of resources. That is why this bipartisan legislation imposes sanctions on foreign entities that provide material and financial support to Hamas and Islamic Jihad, while also providing for important humanitarian exemptions. Once again, I thank my colleagues for their work on this bill. I urge support for it, and I yield back the balance of my time. General Lee yields back any further discussion on the bill. Mr. Phillips is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Meeks uh, for bringing this bill before the committee. But let me start first by by thanking my Republican friends and colleagues for uh, defending the state of Israel, uh, for sp supporting the Jewish community, uh, both here and around the world, uh, during days and weeks and months, uh, that we surely need it. Uh, it's meaningful to us, it's important to us, um, and we are feeling feelings and fears and threats that I think none of us ever anticipated feeling in this country uh, as Americans. And I want to thank you for that, sincerely. Um, the attack that Hamas perpetrated on Israel on October 7th was just despicable. Unspeakable evil, um, over 1,500 human beings murdered in cold blood, thousands wounded, and almost 200 believed to be held hostage in Gaza. One of them is this little three-year-old girl, Abigail, whose father was shot with her in his arms, and she kidnapped and taken to Gaza. And I just want all of us to think about her, her parents, and other little children, both in Israel and in Gaza right now. And that's why we serve on this committee to try to prevent these nauseating experiences of loss of life. 
As members of Congress, it is our responsibility to do everything in our power to ensure that these terrorists are held to account and not able to use United States financial institutions to facilitate their despicable work. And that's why I was pleased to see the Biden administration sanction 10 Hamas members to disrupt its financial network. And that is why I stand ready to support this measure, which imposes further sanctions targeting Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. However, I am disappointed about the implications that such a broad imposition of sanctions will have on Palestinian civilians, and I do want to separate the two. It is my belief, having spoken to many, that Hamas does not represent the majority of Palestinian civilians. In fact, I believe Hamas to be both the enemy of Israel, of Palestinians, uh, and the free world. And the chilling effect that those proposed sanctions will have on trusted NGO partners delivering critical humanitarian assistance to Palestinian civilians is also on my mind. So in this moment of tragedy, I just ask that we remember that the majority of Palestinians are not Hamas and that Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. So to that end, I support Representative Jacob's amendment that would strengthen humanitarian exceptions in the bill, and I look forward to working to further confront Hamas and other terrorist organizations while continuing to support innocent civilians all around the world. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Mr. Mos Moskowitz is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I won't repeat uh, too much of what my colleagues have said, um, but I want to point out a couple of things, because I think it's important over the last couple of days, as we saw that horrific, tragic incident uh, at the hospital uh, in Gaza. Um, first of all, the Gaza Ministry of Health is Hamas. So any information that comes out of Gaza is put out by a terrorist organization. It is and was deeply disturbing to see the international media immediately take the word of Hamas that caused protests and riots around the world. It caused meetings with our allies to be canceled for the president to see colleagues in this body immediately blame Israel with zero proof that Israel had anything to do with the tragedy at that hospital. But yet, when Israel said they didn't do it, everyone said, you must have proof. You must show us satellite imagery. You must show us the audio recordings. You must show us the missile trajectory. You must show us the size of the crater. Hamas, no proof. Israel, prove it. It is a disgusting, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel double standard. It is part of why this bill and resolution is so important. There can be no ceasefire with a terrorist organization while they're holding 200 hostages, Americans, children, Holocaust survivors. What kind of policy would that be if we let people capture Americans and then immediately say ceasefire? What kind of message would that send to all the other people that want to cause harm to America that you can just take our people and immediately we enter into a ceasefire? You know, this is the first time that I can recall the stories my grandmother who escaped Berlin, Germany as part of the kinder transport for the Holocaust. The pictures you've seen at the Holocaust Memorial, the stories you've told, the videos you've seen, Schindler's List. This is the first time that I think the Jewish community in modern times now understands that there are people, terrorist organizations, others protesting around the world and in this country that want to see Hitler's dream fulfilled. And that is what Hamas is committed to. Hamas is not just committed to wiping a country off the earth, the international media. It's abhorrent. And so I want to thank the sponsor Congressman Mass for bringing this forward. I just want to remind people when they say there's two sides to this story. Let me tell you something. Raping women is not resistance. Taking children hostage is not resistance. Taking a Holocaust survivor is not resistance. And killing 1,300 civilians, children in front of their parents, parents in front of their children, decapitating people is not resistance. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman yields back. Uh, any further discussion on the bill?